continue living from faith to faith. So have your growth, have your faith grown? <laughs> yeah. What is faith? Why you say your faith has grown? You have started to huh? <laughs> read the word of God more. Read and then believe God's word more, right? I think on God's word, right? So that is when your faith has grown. You are believing God's word, speaking his word and acting upon his word more and more. All right, that is what we mean by going from faith to faith. Okay, today's one is the faith of Barak. Does anyone know who is Barak? <laughs> okay, one of your children can be called Barak. <laughs> hey, very powerful, huh, Barak. <laughs> Good man, great man. Huh? Hmm. So you see, in this hall of faith, all right, in Hebrews 11, the author mentioned not all the famous people, right? Some are, of course. It, okay, let, let's go to the verse. Huh? Okay, before that, uh, a, a quote from Smith Ruther's word. Okay, one of my favorite men of God. I believe that God's ministers, who are God's ministers? Ah, hallelujah. I think he did say just me. <laughs> okay, everyone. Huh? Are to be what? Flames of fire. Okay, you know why? Because God's Holy Spirit inside. And the Holy Spirit come. You're baptized with Holy Spirit and with fire. So when you do things with passion, right? Fire burn hot. You're not cold or half hot, half cold, right? We are all ministers, flames of fire. We're going to have, we're going to teach, I will teach more on that also at the Holy Spirit Power Feast coming. Okay, so we are flames of fire, not, not flames of ice, <laughs> frozen ice. <laughs> okay, we are not frozen ice, huh? All frozen, right? But we are full of fire. Nothing less than flames, okay? Nothing less than flames. Don't see yourself as just normal, you know, boring. Okay, you are all fire. Okay, nothing less than mighty instruments with burning messages. Ah, we're going to pray and send out our first missionary this morning. All right, Robert Lowe. He is. He has to have what burning messages inside fire. You know. In Jeremiah or Ezekiel, it says that God's word burn in my heart. Okay, when you preach the word of God, whether it's just one verse, right, or uh, passage or what, you are uh, SJ teachers, right? That word must burn in your heart. Why? Because God's word is fire also, right? It's light, it's fire, it's lamb. Okay, lamb got fire inside or oil inside. So when we prepare a message or a sermon, right, prepare until, you know, that message burn inside your heart, right? If you have a message and it doesn't burn, it's only in the head, throw that message one side, <laughs> okay? Let the word of God burn, right? That message inside your heart. Hmm. Where else? With a heart full of love. So remember, right, just now we're talking like, is the why Jesus performed so many miracles, right? Because he got God's love in his heart. Yeah, he was not looking for fame. He was not looking for you know uh, to build his ministry, right? He was just full, filled with agape love. All right, for person, he look at the person who's sick, and his heart goes out to the person. I don't want to see you sick. That's where healing takes place. All the ministers, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, Catherine Kuhlman, and all uh, Benny Hinn, all those people, so many of them throughout the ages. How did they how did they move in that powerful anointing of healing in their heart? It was the only the love of God. You know, Catherine Kuhlman one time said, you know, there are thousands in the meeting, right? And then she will finish the, but not everyone gets healed. And after she finished, she will still cry to the Lord and say, 
how I wish more were healed. You know, what, why, you know, uh, the rest were not healed. Not because of you know, the ministry or what, but because her heart was still burning for them. You know, to see a soul being trapped in a body that is full of disease. It's like seeing the devil holding someone. And you know that Jesus has already released it. Your heart goes out to someone who is still suffering from sickness, disease, or sin, or guilt, or shame. All that are without sin. Right? The love of God. Okay? This is not natural. We cannot churn it out or, or you know, make a cup of love <laughs> from our own. Right? Romans 5.5 5 says when you want to receive this kind of love, you receive it at when? <laughs> the love of God was shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit came, all right, besides the, the fire, all right, God's a consuming fire. He's talking about His love that consumes us. You know, that's why when we serve the Lord, nothing will stop us. Okay. He has already consumed you, eaten you up. The zeal of the Lord has eaten me up. You know, that there is nothing else that is more satisfying, right, than preaching the gospel, than uh, saving souls, than uh, uh, reaching out and see people get healed, get saved, get delivered. Right? This love was given to us. We cannot do it by our own self. Because tomorrow, I think I will try to love. <laughs> that is so horrible. <laughs> How to love, man, the colleague, huh? so terrible, right? <laughs> Bullying you, okay? So I say, how to love? You cannot do it, right? It is after we are born again, Holy Spirit come, we pour out that love inside us. To love even the ugliest person. You know, when you go into ministry and you travel a bit, you see people, even in the physical, they are so physically, like so ugly like that. Normally, we would like to see, you say the child, so beautiful, so cute, we want to hold, right? But you see what a child who is born in a physical, so ugly. How can, you know, these missionaries go and put their arms around such ugly, you will say, creatures in our words, in our words, right? But Jesus went and let his hand around them. These missionaries, they went and hugged them. You know, some look like animals. They were born like that, you know? And what? But they have a spirit inside, right? And God's love pour out to them. So when you go out into the mission, right, it is not looking at the physical anymore. But you see, they are suffering the way Jesus saw the people, right, in this world because of sin, because of Satan, right? They were trapped. And all these things come out. It's not because God made them like that, it was a result of sin. But Jesus sent us, sent you, all the ministers, the flames of fire, to go and set them free. Right? They're born with no leg, born with crooked, you know, eyes, crooked, everything that's so horrible. Jesus came. Use every one of us. He wants to use each one of us, right? In your youth, in your strength, right? To go and do what Jesus came to do, right? So, with a heart full of love, agape, all of you have it, all right? With such a depth of consecration that God has taken full charge of the body and it exists only that it may manifest the glory of God. Why God gives us the renewal of you is not to display us as Mr. Universe or Miss Universe. <laughs> okay? It's to Give us the supernatural health and strength to what? To manifest the glory of God. Our bodies in Romans 12, 1, right? Paul says what? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice that you may, which is your reasonable service. Then the second verse. Do not be conformed to this world, but be 
transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. So what is the perfect accept will of God, right? To give us this as we surrender, as we present our bodies to Him, right? Because only bodies can contact, right? The other bodies of this world. So our body, our hands, our feet, our eyes, right? Our heart, every part is to be filled with God, with Holy Spirit, with God's love, with this word to go and touch the sick, the lame, the weak, the hurting. These are hands of Jesus, right? Hands of love, okay? For you to display the glory of God, okay? With that God has the full charge of our body. That's why right. in this body, all right, God, uh, in the new creation, Paul says what? Do not yield your, your, your flesh to sin, right? Don't use, let this body go into sin, not as a law, but knowing that we can choose now, right? We can choose if we want to do bad things from our body, but because we experience the grace and the love of Jesus, we now want to want to yield our bodies, our hands and our feet to do the will of God, right? Just like Robert Lowe will yield his body, okay, healthy body, okay, to go and preach the gospel and heal the sick and touch lives in Cambodia. Next week already. <laughs> Very fast. Okay, that is how we present. Huh? Uh, this week, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, our bodies to the Lord. Say, Lord, use my hands, use my feet. That's why the, the, the gospel of peace, the, how beautiful are the feet of those, right? Who bring the gospel of peace, right? And why did God give you such a healthy, beautiful, wonderful body? Is to display his glory, to manifest his glory. Your hands are not just to take and eat <laughs> food. Your hands are the hands of Jesus to reach out touch someone, heal someone, love someone with the love of Jesus. Amen? Okay, let God have his, the full charge of our bodies. Hebrews 11, 32. And what more could I say to convince you? For there is not enough time to tell you of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. So earlier we uh, studied a little bit on Abraham, Sarah, you know, all those uh, names in this hall of faith. Okay, and today we go to, and then the, the, uh, the author says, there's not enough time because there are so many ministers, flames of fire, so many warriors in the spirit all right, of, of God that not enough to you know, to tell of everyone. But he mentioned these few, these names, right? So last week we talked about Gideon, right? Remember? So Gideon, what was his? They were all these people, they were all weak people, not strong on their own. But when they filled with God and God speak to them, they believe God's word, they became a mighty warrior in God. Although God already see them as mighty warriors. Through faith, power, they conquered kingdoms. Okay, so you see in the Old Testament, there's all these uh, conquering of countries, a kingdom. And established through justice. Justice was by the judges, right, in the, uh, in the Bible. The faith passed them onto their promises and pulled them into reality. So remember Abraham, right? Faith must fasten to what? To God's promises. Okay? Make sure your rope tie properly to the correct place. <laughs> okay? To his promises. Okay? Not the natural realm. And then you can pull to from the spiritual realm to manifest in the natural realm for yourself and for the people around you. The promises of God that are all supernatural. It was faith that shut the mouth of lion, put out the power of raging fire, and caused many to escape certain death by the sword. Right? That means they were about to be killed, but God saved them. So it was by faith, not by luck. <laughs> coincidence. Okay? In this world, we have coincidence, luck, 
Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Right. By their faith, they believe God. Okay. So, although weak, every one of us in our own strength without Christ are weak. Their faith imparted. Mm, when you are weak, you need what? Uh, what is the one that the driver's dream? <laughs> Red Bull. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red Bull. Okay. So you know when you're weak, you don't need Red Bull. Okay. What do you need? The word of God, faith. Okay. Faith imparted. And then you need the faith to bring forth power. So they use the natural things to, to give this natural body so called power or strength. Remember yesterday, Abraham fathered a son in his impossible old age by faith. Ah, good. <laughs> Not by Red Bull or, or whatever <laughs> that can stimulate the body, okay, in the natural. So, this is the realm of the miracle, the realm of supernatural. And it all happened when we believe. We have the faith, okay? As we believe God's word, supernatural power. So, it's faith that brings forth the sun, okay? Not the natural. The natural can by natural ways. In faith, imparted power to make them strong. So, if any part of your body is weak, and you want to make it strong? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, that is a faith in God's word. All right, and which word? You need to know which one. Okay, the words about your bones. There are scriptures specifically for bones. General scripture is by stripes we are healed. Right, God uh, uh, give us uh, to prosper both in spirit, in soul, and in health. Third John two. I'm very happy to see most, most of you now quoting scripture. <laughs> all right? Yeah, in all the uh, blessings that you all give me, I right? oh, uh, all can give scripture already. <laughs> yes, because the scripture is the powerful one. It's God's word. Okay? It's not religious thing. Okay? But it is the word of God. Right? As the more and more you fill yourself with the word of God, the word of God is spirit and life, right? See, I may forget the general words, but I will remember the word of God that you all gave. Same, right? You may forget general words, but you will remember the word of God that you meditate upon, that you heard in the sermon. Okay? Faith sparked courage with them, and they became mighty uh, not mighty mouth. <laughs> okay? Mighty warriors. So all God's mighty warriors are here this morning. All right? In battle, okay. Is there a battle today still? Yes. Yes, because there is still a devil. All right, but we know that we battle from victory. Okay, we not ask God to defeat the devil. He's already defeated. But the battle is mainly first in our own life. Is in the <laughs> very clear already. It's inside here, right? All the wrong thinking. So in order to clear to win over this battle of uh, all the unbelief and the wrong thing. How? Break the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> break the wall. Meditate the word of God. Ah, at night. Yes, meditate day and night and get the truth. Because only when you have the truth of God's word, what God say about everything in life, then you can the, the wall will break down. Okay. Uh, if you don't have truth, the wall cannot come down. Okay, so you don't go to because you don't even recognize the the lie or the half truth. But when you got the truth already, you immediately recognize the lie. For example. Right? What is the truth? The God will is for you to be healthy, right? And Jesus take away your sickness. So the lie is the lie is uh, the, the physical that uh, the lie is you pain. Yeah. Ah yeah. So the lie is that oh it's okay, you know, as long as you're still here, never mind last sick and people never mind la, you know. Yeah. Okay, so when we know the truth is we will not accept. Die. We will not accept sickness anymore in our lives. Okay, that is one example. Okay, so uh, became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm into battle array. What's that mean? Like, uh, what uh, Elisha told the servant, look, open ah. 
Ah. Yes, yeah. so they were able to, these men, mighty warriors, speak from the spiritual realm, from God's realm, and from there, the way they speak, the words that they speak, they are what? Commanding the uh, angels from the other realm to come in. So there are plenty, thousands of angels that are going with you, Robert Lowe, right? or any one of us, wherever we go, right, to preach the gospel or share Jesus. Each time you have someone in front of you want to share Jesus, there are warriors behind you, around you, protecting, all right, both you and the person. So you then you just command, okay, the, the, the what do you call it? This army is from the other realm. If you don't realize you come from that realm, then you go in, ah, yeah, I want person alone when you just die, okay? But you know that all are with you, then with the other side, the devil side, okay? So this is powerful, another realm. Okay, that we live in, that becomes our natural habitat. Okay. He was Barak. Okay, so who is this uh, Barak, right? That we come into, uh, learn a bit about him, right? Because he is very interesting character. He is not the main character in the uh, Judges, in the book of Judges. That's where we, uh, chapter four, five, when we read about him. Let's, let's uh, we'll read some narration so we don't go through the full detail when he first appeared in the Bible. So Barak is, was another of those mighty Hebrew warriors who answered the call of God despite overwhelming odds. His name means lightning. Wow, wow. you like to be lightning? <laughs> Woo, power, right? That's his name, okay? A warrior and an army commander of the Jewish people, all right, during the time of judges after Joshua died, Israel was under judges. Once again, in the time of the judges, Israel had drifted away from God and the Canaanites oppressed them for 20 years. So they went to already the promised land, but there were enemies inside the promised land. Okay, it's just like we already inherit all the blessings in Christ, but where are the enemies now? Inside the head, all right? That stop trying to prevent you from receiving your full inheritance by half truth and lies to you. So these are the Canaanites, right? They oppressed the Jews, the Israelites for 20 years. This one is the natural one, very terrible, right? Today, the devil was both spiritual and natural also tormenting a lot of people and believers as well. God called upon Deborah, a wise and holy woman, to be judge and prophetess over the Jews. So she was the only female judge among the 12 judges during that time. Okay, <clears throat> but today it's not about Deborah. It's about Barak. Okay, very interesting. Deborah. Okay, so Deborah was the one, the judge, right? God appointed her, anointed her as a prophet and judge during that time. The, you know why people need a judge? Yes, all right, and there's peace, right? Because they're fighting. <laughs> quarrel, all, every quarrel has to bring to the judge, okay? Because that time, no one rule. So later on, they had kings. That's where uh, the king come in. Okay, before that, judge. And they are usually, they are all appointed by God uh, and are called prophets as well. So judge has the wisdom to discern right and wrong, whichever who is right. So they have, then when settled already, the discord, uh, the dispute, then they have peace again. Okay, so Deborah summoned Barak, telling him, so summon means um, <laughs> who is Barak? A, a army general, right? Commander. Telling him God had commanded him to gather the tribes of Jebulun and Naphtali and to go to Mount Tabor. So they were in the oppression of 20 years by the enemy armies. Barak led a force of 10,000 men. Okay. Uh, but Caesarea, commander of King Jabin's Canaanite army, Canaan is all the uh, enemies' side, had the advantage because Caesarea had 900 iron chariots 
In ancient warfare, chariots were like tanks. So we are living now in 2022, okay? We don't use uh, <laughs> iron chariots, okay? But to help us understand, they are like today's tanks or maybe even uh, yeah. fighter planes, you know, and all that, okay? Ship and intimidating and deadly. So the Barako Barak to advance because the Lord had gone before him. So Deborah is the judge, the prophetess, the God appointed. The Barak is the army general, the one that will actually go into the warfare and fight. Okay. <clears throat> so Deborah called, but that time they were all living in fear. The whole army, all that, don't even have, uh, if you read detail, they don't even have weapons anymore. They also go at the backside of the road. You know, they travel because they're scared of the enemy. So the warriors, the army, generals, soldiers, all were living in fear, oppressed, fear of the Canaanites. And what happened when Deborah told Barak to go forward? Because the Lord has gone before him, Barak and his men followed what she said and raced down Mount Tabor. God brought a massive rainstorm. You see, when it, all the battles of the Jews and Israelites were very, very supernatural, right? Yeah, we saw Jericho, right, Joshua, and then uh, so many, uh, in the other one, Gideon one also, okay? All God will do for them. All they just need is to follow certain instructions just to go, all right? And God brought this one. They met the enemy, but God gave rainstorm. Rainstorm can come from human or not. <laughs> Only God can do, right? Okay. The ground turned to mud. So can you imagine they had iron chariots, right? Cannot, then what happened to the iron chariots? So <laughs> stuck in the mud, right? Because of the heavy rain, right? It bogged down serious chariots. The stream uh, overflowed. There was a flood and swept many of the Canaanites away. Actually, so the army did very uh, very simple thing again. After they all stuck already, they just go there and kill them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God did the main thing, right? So Barak and his men pursued, not, and then they killed. Okay? Not one of Israel's armies was left alive. Okay? Because God did the main, main thing. Sisera, however, which is the, the general or the captain of the enemy side, managed to escape. Then he ran to, this is for you to know the story. He ran to the tent of jail, a Canaanite woman. She took him in, gave him milk to drink, and had him lie down on the mat. When, she, when he slept, she took a tan stick and a hammer and drove the stick through Sisera's temple, killing him. Okay, then Barak arrived. See, God used uh, this woman to kill the army commander of the other side. Then Barak came. Jail showed him Sisera's corpse. Jail is a lady. <laughs> Barak and the army eventually destroyed Jabin, king of the Canaanites. Then there was peace in Israel for 40 years. Okay, so this is the general outline of the story. Barak recognized. So what about this Barak? How come Barak is named inside this uh, hall of fame, or hall of fame, right? Barak, one of the highlights about him or the, the interesting uh, fact about Barak is that he recognized Deborah's authority, at, which had been given to her by God. Even as the army general, right, he was one who recognized God's authority in, in the, his appointed uh, prophets or judges. So he obeyed a woman, something rare, this is a, a narrative by someone, um, something rare in ancient times, right? Ancient times especially, right? Men is the yeah. <laughs> That's why there was only one woman judge of all the judges, right? He was a man of great courage and had faith in God and would intervene on Israel's behalf. Okay, this was Barak. Then we, we can read a few verses here how he uh, listened and submitted to the authority of Deborah at that time. He was uh, gifted as a general, right? To go out and fight. But he listened to 
the woman of God, the prophetess and the judge. Deborah said to Barak, go. <laughs> go. It's very interesting when, when the Lord gives me, I don't feel, I, you know, I prepare my message every week one, right? Fresh. So I don't know what is next one <laughs> until I come to it. And then when I came to this, I was just like laughing, Holy Spirit, you're very cute. <laughs> because there's one Barak who's going to go now. <laughs> I said, oh, where is he going now? Okay, this, this thing, uh, and then you give me this message. But it's not only our Barak here, right? Every one of you are Barak. You can see, all right, from this, uh, the meaning uh, and the whole story, right? That, but the, the one that is most significant, most obvious is of course our brother Robert Lowe, right? Because he is going to go, right? It's so interesting. Why this message not two, two weeks earlier or whatever? It came, to, and I'm just following the book of Hebrews, all the verses down, okay? So God knows when to speak what, right? This is the day that the Lord has given Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> into your hands. Amen. <laughs> okay, never mind. He has not the Lord gone ahead of you. Right? So you know, you must know God has gone ahead of you. Right? He always go in front of us. He already prepared everything. He already knows the future. Right? Because time uh, is not, uh, God is not limited by time. So God knows all about the future, what's going to happen in Cambodia, what's going to happen with uh, uh, Robert Lowe Barak. So Barak went down with Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. So now uh, Robert Lowe will go, but he has 10,000 ah! <laughs> <laughs> warring angels with him. He may not have 10,000 men, right? But a uh, uh, human being, but he has 10,000 chariots of God, right? With him following him and making sure, all right, the battle is won, all right. So, when Barak attacked, so all he did was just obey, go, and then attack, all right, at the word of uh, the Barak, the prophetess and judge. When Barak attacked, see, the Lord do, okay, the Lord threw Caesarea, the devil, right, the enemy, and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Caesarea leaped down from his chariot, escaped on foot, and then they saw how he was killed by Jael. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy. So there's a part for Barak to do, right? Chased the, the rest of the enemy army all the way to this place, killing all of Caesarea's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. So he was a mighty warrior, a mighty general, right? So he killed. Uh, so Robert Loco killed all the demons there, possessing the, the Cambodian people, all right? All the giving sickness to them, right? And all these uh, in sin and bondage, okay? Killed all these demonic forces behind the suffering of the people there who don't know Jesus or even who knows. Don't leave one alive. <laughs> Uh, but don't kill them physically. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we all have to go. <laughs> you have to bail your wife. will have to go and bail you out. Okay? Just kill the enemy, right? Okay. Barak was the son of Abinom of Kadesh in Nepali. He was a contemporary. He was Syria had the advantage with 900 uh, iron chariots, but Barak defeated the Canaanite oppressor despite overwhelming odds. So remember, you see all Gideon also same thing, right? You don't need so many people. That's why our Barak is very brave. <laughs> Go, because he got all these 10,000 supernatural chariots and you got Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God with you. Okay? With him. So always realize you are from supernatural realm. So people say, oh, you dare to go out. <laughs> so why not, right? You have God with you, Jesus with you, Holy Spirit with you, and the army, the host of heaven with you. That is the difference when you understand the spiritual realm. Okay, 
So, don't look at the natural, they may have advantage, they may look fierce, they may look, you know, sickness is, wow, I've never seen this sickness before, <laughs> right? In, in, in Malaysia, cannot really, <laughs> need to go operation, right? There, it's the faith that you have to believe Jesus in them, okay? It's the power of God, so don't look at the natural. Barak defeated them against, despite overwhelming odds, okay? So Bara is like a supportive flow, right? And yet has a, a job to do. Okay, so every one of you can are like Bara here for now. Okay, like me, and I thank you all, you know, for doing everything like uh, lightning speed. <laughs> okay, right? For what? Because it is for God. What God wants to do, right? Two, most of all, Jesus destroyed already the Satan, but there are still all his demons around, right? Uh, disturbing people, controlling their lives, and we are sent like an army of God. We are a family of God, full of love, right? It's agape. At the same time, we have demonic forces to deal with. Okay, that's why God raised everyone here to, with his might, with his power to go and chase all these devils out, you know, heal the sick, right? raise the dead. Uh, what else? <laughs> Cause the lame to walk, right? The eyes, the blind to see, okay? Especially when you go into mission, you have opportunity to do all that <laughs> because there is a lot like that there. Mm. Okay, let's look at Chronicles, all right? In relation to this, uh, faith of Barak as a one who listened to uh, God's appointed judge and prophetess. Then the Second Chronicles 20, 14 to 15. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jahizil, son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. So he said, listen, so this is the spirit of God, the time the, the, the prophets and the priests and all that don't have Holy Spirit, okay? So when God wants to speak, the Holy Spirit will come upon them. Listen, King Jehoshaphat is one of the kings of Israel at the time and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. So this is... Uh, the, the spirit of the Lord come upon the line of Levites, the priests, right? To speak to the king. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. The battle is not yours, but God's. So you all have heard of this. If you have been a believer for some time, you have heard of this verse. Huh? Huh? What one angel. <laughs> okay. But you, you would have heard this word, right? They will tell you, oh, battle is not yours. So you know where it comes from. Now today you will see the context, all right? Exactly where this verse comes from, all right? What it means by the battle is not yours, but God. So during the time of the Israelites, they were fighting against the enemy. So it was a word from God to King Jehoshaphat to tell them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass. See, God knows all the strategy, the plan already of, the, of what he's going to do all right, in every battle. You will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeru. We, if we, when we understand supernatural realm and we can see the supernatural realm, if, uh, we actually see before <laughs> ahead of what is going to happen. That's why we have what we call godly wisdom. If you go to God's word, right, you will receive wisdom. Okay, what is going to make right decisions, wise decisions in life? Because God's word already tells us about life, about what is ahead for us. But if we don't have God's word, that's why the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, we will be ignorant of whatever is happening. 
and then we will make foolish decisions and take foolish actions, right? You will not have to fight this battle. Today, in Christ, God tells us, rest. In that sense of resting, right? Preaching the gospel is different thing, right? The resting in your spirit, that means don't worry. So, Robert Lowe won't be sitting down here until Friday, worry. <laughs> then take a sleeping pill. <laughs> Right, that's a terrible way to go into the uh, to do the work of God, right? It's resting in God, resting that yeah, you prepare your part, meditate the word of God, but you rest in your spirit that the battle is the Lord, right? He sent you, he will he's gone ahead of you, and he already won the victory. He already how do we handle every situation? Uh, God has already given you the word, the wisdom. So no need to lose any sleep on it. Sleep more so you can have to see more dreams. <laughs> you will not have to fight this battle so we don't fight until you cannot sleep, okay? Take up your position. This is the, uh, the uh, armor of God, right? How we fight is to put on the armor of God in Ephesians 6. I won't go into detail, but what is basically the armor? Ah, you see, I teach before already, all oh, forgot is that? <laughs> Can you remember a bit? Yeah. Ah, okay, a bit. First thing, the first one. Yeah. Hey, the first one, ah. Oh, the ah, yeah, the head oh, first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the helmet of salvation. Yeah, because when you have a lot of doubts here of your salvation, salvation is not just go to heaven, right? Besides that, it has all the uh, the blessings inside salvation, right? So, so, which is what? Wholeness in every area of prosperity, deliverance, safe from sin, safe from sickness, right? Safe from disease, safe from guilt, condemnation, safe from poverty. So, if we don't have this in our head, why? How to fight, ah? Uh? Because the devil will really go and fight or deliver someone. Then what happens? All the thoughts come in. You are so, <laughs> you are so, you are so not, right? All the accusations, huh? you're not behaving very well. You don't have everything, you know, you are not a good believer. So all the condemnation come in. Then, you sure you can do it. All about you, all the accusations. So they don't have this helmet of salvation. Ah, uh, go up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the accuser will come and talk to you. Where in the head, isn't it? So you need to wear the helmet. Know what is inside your salvation in Christ. You have received complete forgiveness of sin. You are saved once and forever. You are the righteousness of God. Okay, so first, that salvation, you need to meditate and receive all that. Stand on that. Okay. So that the rest, right, the breastplate of righteousness, again, to protect your heart. Okay, otherwise, again, the devil will say, nah. <laughs> <What I'm saying. laughs> it's still simple, you know. See, last week nobody knows, but you, you did something wrong. Ah. <laughs> then you feel again condemned, right? So we are the righteousness of God. After that, you know, you may say, Jesus, I know. Paul, oh, I know. No, I know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yes. So he will know you because you are also the righteousness of God in Christ. You are not going on your own. If we are on our own, in our own ability, our own knowledge, we know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we go there because we know the Bible also cannot, right? It will be knocked down. But you know who you are. You know who your God is and who you are. The righteousness of God in Christ, God's servant. Okay, that is the best plate and the rest of it. Okay, so take up your position. Your position. Very important. When David fought against Goliath as a young boy, he took up his position. Right? Today, what is our position? Yes, and then we are sons and daughters, okay? We are sons and daughters. So in, in God's uh, the position, is very important. So your position of sonship, you must know that. Okay? But righteousness causes you to have this position. 
Okay, you cannot be sons if Jesus didn't die on the cross, take away your sin and give you his righteousness. Because you have no standing. Position is stand. Right? You can stand straight, stand and lift your head high because you are son. Right? You are daughter. You no more. God gave you that position, just like a CEO. He appointed you as his right hand man, CEO. CEO can face all the, the, the other people in the company, right? He has the power because of his position. position. Okay, so we need to know your position in Christ as son and daughter. So when the devil comes to you, all the party, it's like Jesus. They, they, they recognize Jesus' position. The demons, when Jesus went around, they recognize Jesus' position as the son of God. They see him, they say, why are you coming and disturb us? <laughs> okay, so they will say, why are Robert Lowe coming to disturb us? Because we, we need to get out, right? These are God's people. Right, God loves them. Jesus loves them. So your position, your standing, right? Stand. So after the putting on the, uh, the the what the, the armor, the spiritual armor, the last part, Paul say what? Stand, stand fast. Okay, don't be shaken. Okay, don't be shaken. So we we know God's word. You won't be shaken anymore. Today you stand. Tomorrow you. <laughs> but the wind blow already. Who are you? And then you say, oh, yeah, I don't know who I am. Maybe. Okay, so stand in that position of sonship. Okay, that's why we're no more. Uh, we grow from babies and then we grow to a position of the standing that we are right before God. That anything you say to God, He will do for you. Okay, God has given, like the owner of a company, gave the authority. Right, his power of attorney, right, to the CEO already. The whole company is in his hands. It's how God gave authority to Adam to rule this earth. His standing, right, his position was God's under ruler. He had dominion over the, the, the sea, over the land, right? He had that dominion due to his position. So you have dominion over sickness, over sin, right? Because of the position that God gave you in Christ. Okay? Don't be shaken by the lies that, you know, you're not good enough or whatever. Okay? Stand fast in that position of God and rule. Rule over sin. Rule over the devil. Not rule over your <laughs> yeah, yeah, go over your senses. Don't go over another human being. You <laughs> must listen to me. Stop me. I'm going to go over you now. No, not like that. Huh? Okay. So, go over the devil. Go over your five senses. Yes. That's one very good. Okay. Discipline your body. Go, tell your body what to do. Not your body tell you what to do. Pick up your position. Very important in battle is positioning. Right? The, the army captain had to tell where each person is supposed to stand. stand firm. Yeah, stand firm, right? Whereby the enemy cannot come in, right? If even the games and all that to win, they all must be in the correct position. So we need to know our position in Christ and together as we move along also, right? What position, uh, first our spiritual position and then in the uh, family or in the army, what part are we inside? Okay, because we're going to move together to enforce God's victory on this earth and bring forth His love to the lost world. Okay, so remember the battle now is together as an, as an army. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Right, even in the uh, bringing down the walls of Jericho, right? All of them had position. The Levites first. Uh, so here you have our worshippers. The worship the Lord, bring His anointing down, His presence down, right? And then you have others, okay, in the spiritual position. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. So one thing that will always come against believers is a fear and discouragement. They also inside here, right? When you look into the natural realm, that's where fear comes. So we need to be careful with that. Okay, 
That's, that's why keep on, keep on filling yourself, feeding yourself with the word of God, which is all supernatural realm. Go out. Fear comes in when they look at Goliath, right? So we, uh, so don't look at the natural realm so much. Do not all listen to bad news all the time. <clears throat> listen to good news, right? Do go out and face them tomorrow. The Lord will be with you. So keep God's word inside you. The Lord has gone before me. The Lord will go with me. He has already won the victory and the righteousness of God. Okay? As long as you're keeping in the spiritual, supernatural realm, fear and discouragement will not overtake you. Right? Jehoshaphat bowed down before his face on the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Honor the Lord. Okay? In every battle, honor the Lord. Before we go do anything or what, that's why we worship Him. Right? We talk in singing song, right? In our life, we honor Him. We give Him the respect, the due respect and the honor by our worship, acknowledging Him. Say, God, I cannot do, you can do. I acknowledge you, it's like, I acknowledge Holy Spirit as my greatest teacher. Right? Because in my own human wisdom, I will give you my own opinion. <laughs> which, is a, which is nothing. All right? God don't care about my opinion. All right? And we need to have his opinion of things. What God thinks of different situations. That's his wisdom. Then some divides from the Kohites and Kohites stood up and praised the Lord. So these are the priests. Today we are all kings and priests in Christ. Okay? Worship the Lord. Stand up. Okay? In your spirit, praise Him. The Lord God of Israel with a soft voice. Oh. Ah, so I see Daphne, loud voice. And her voice getting louder and louder already in the spot jewels. <laughs> Last time very soft one. Now, whoa. <laughs> like the lion coming up. Okay. So with a loud voice, all right? Preach the gospel with a loud voice. Don't be afraid. Okay. <clears throat> Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld, established, stand firm. Okay. So when you faith, please believe. Believe what God says. And you will be established. You will be strong. You will stand firm. Have faith in his prophets. And you will be successful or prosper. Okay? Because why? The prophets speak God's word. Prophets are ones who speak God's word. So, have faith, believe in God. You will be established. You will stand firm. Believe in his, his prophet, huh? real one, the real prophet, not the false prophet. Okay? <laughs> you will be successful. Okay? That means standing and then enjoy all the blessings. When God speaks through his prophets, the people believe they succeed in all their endeavors. So make sure the prophet and speak God's word. Right? The word prosper or succeed is salat, 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 salat. Advance. You will advance. God has always said, this is not like this. All right? There will always be, be uh, to last in the, in the Old Testament, you have prophets, priests, and kings, right? To govern the people, to direct them, right? And then today in Christ, you have the five fold. Oh. Who are the five fold? Oh, Apostle, prophet, evangelist, evangelist, teachers, pastors. Okay, so God has put in every church that He's He start. All right, apostles, prophets. These are His people who will give direction and help the people to succeed. And, uh, yes, to advance. Okay, if not, you go down around the desert. Again, okay. Advance to pro prosper, make progress, succeed, and be profitable. Okay, they are there to help you to grow. 
and 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 uh, advance, right? Go go what? Go forward. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. No, no, go rolling down the slope. <laughs> Move backwards. Okay. Move forward. All right. Make you to make prosperous. Okay. To prosper, be successful. Uh, push forward. So sometimes I have to push a bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, push, push, push. You know, anyway, they don't, don't meditate God's word. Right, yeah, push, push, push. Okay, push. All right. So these are the job of the prophets, the apostles, teachers, right? And so that the people, when they prosper, they will move forward. Okay, to push forward, break out, go over, be profitable. Push, go forward. Wish that we go to Indonesia again. Ah, <laughs> this one going Myanmar. Okay, cover the uttermost parts of the earth. Okay, yeah, every one of you are flames of fire, mighty men and warriors of God. Okay, equip. Push drop in the sea. Huh? Push drop in the sea. No, I say if you're not equipping, push and drop in the sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not equip, huh? No, just be if you equip to. Go and advance the kingdom of God. Okay, so it's so beautiful, right? A uh, few few weeks ago, I think, yeah, the Lord gave this word about our uh, arrival, right? Supernatural arrival, uh, miraculous in Christ, right? And uh, John uh, draw this uh, this boat with. Uh, so beautiful, right? Everyone resting, no more. They were rowing halfway, the disciples, right? To go to the other side. <laughs> oh, okay. Everyone, huh? Everyone of you, okay? And when Jesus comes into the boat, when Holy Spirit comes in, we reach our destination, right? Which is the prophetic word already gone for since the, uh, we started in May last year. We started with Amos. God will accelerate everything, right? Accelerate her also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Babies come soon. <laughs> okay, so your blessings, all right, everywhere we look, there will be blessings, all right? They've advanced so fast, supernaturally. It's like God doing for us, everything. Then this year, you will prosper even more. Ezekiel, this is where we are heading, right? The blessing, Psalms, blessing upon blessing, okay? And it is not all our human effort. All we just to do need to do is like para. <laughs> okay? We hear the word of God, believe the word of God, and then we hear his prophet, believe his prophet, have faith, and let's do, and we will advance together, okay? Take your position. Okay, all sit down and rest. But the spirit must rest. Not God gave us the promise. God gave us the word. Then take a position, stand still, and watch the Lord's victory. Of God in beauty for ashes. Let's say this because we are together here in this ministry, all right? In this book. Not saying anything bad about other books, okay? Mm -hmm. Just that we are here, God put us here, then we are together. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out. <laughs> all the barracks here, okay? Go out. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share his love. For the Lord is with you. All right, God is with you, okay? So, this is God's word for us today. And I just want to share a word of wisdom here, all right, in this respect of the ministry, okay? When we are here uh, together, then, okay, we are beauty for ashes ministry, all right? And if you uh, go out, uh, yes, you come from beauty for ashes ministry. But when we are together, Okay, with other ministries, with other pastors or people from uh, other places. Do not, do not, no need to so much mention our ministry. 
we do not promote our ministry. We promote Jesus Christ. We are all one, whether we come from different churches. All right? We are all one as uh, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers in the family of God. Okay? So, do not promote beauty for ashes outside when you are with others. Okay? But when we are here, yes, because we are in this boat, we are in this uh, ministry, we invite people, we invite them to come here. When you go out as a missionary, of course, you, you have to mention where you come from. <laughs> it's where you come from. Above. <laughs> then you say, oh, you just landed. Yeah, yeah, from the sky. <laughs> okay, so we are still on this earth. Okay, we still have a ministry right, for men to recognize, you know, where you come from. You receive proper doctrine and teaching. Okay, from the ministry. So that one is your credibility on this earth. Okay, where you come from is important. Okay, so have a have wisdom, right? You don't go everywhere, beauty for Asian people. <laughs> I so don't know where to want to do. <laughs> okay, so especially when you are with people from other churches, right? Respect them as well, honor them, and we are all in the family of God. Okay, only when we are together in this boat, we see the vision of uh, ourselves here that God has given for beauty for ashes and we just work along to do what God has called us to do as in this world. All right? But we do not put down other people or try to promote our ministry. All right? We are here to be a blessing to others okay? and we bring people in so that they can learn and grow. Okay? So the wisdom, we need to have that. Okay? I don't want... Uh, you know, to boast of beauty for ashes, okay? But we boast of the Lord, of His goodness. But where we come from, yes, this, there is this ministry that exists, that God has uh, given us, okay? Understand? Amen. Praise the Lord. Today's shopping. <laughs> yeah. Very rich. Very rich. Huh? Very rich. Very rich. <laughs> Oh, rich already. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> rich, rich. rich, all the blessings, all right, and the promises, the goodness of God. Okay? And every one of us uh, understand our role, our position. Okay? Uh, I'm not dictator. <laughs> okay? We're just here, like, uh, uh, hear the word of God. Prophetic God has given me this anointing, uh, like Deborah's anointing that was what was received. I received during my first Daniel fast, <laughs> which I have no idea <laughs> what it was all about. <laughs> okay, so but the, that's why the Daniel fast is so powerful, you know. And this time around, it is really, really um, going to be so beneficial spiritually. That's why for those of you who are going through it, all right, don't focus on the food anymore, but if you are new, Will guide you other than that focus on the spiritual part now because when you receive a lot of things dreams spiritual dreams visions uh, word of god yes. when we seek him he, he delight to speak to us okay so everything is from god everything we do without him comes to nothing right he gave us life, tremendous, wonderful life, eternal life, abundant life. We are his hands and feet to travel this life and do what Jesus called us to do. Right? To be blessed so that we don't have to worry about anything, physical needs and all that, but take care, then we can do the work. Right? So when you go out, you have to worry your, your wife got put to be or not. <laughs> your children got put to be or not. Right? We also believe in God's providence and blessing. God will take care of that. When I preach to you, I know God will take care. When I do this ministry, I know God will take care of my son. Right? I can spare. <laughs> I said, don't know whether it's going to be good. Okay? But see, God takes care of our family members, right? of our loved ones. When we obey His word and go forth, and do the work of God, not from our own ability, but from His empowerment, His love. Okay, we move together when we are together, we move together as one body. That we come in, all right, knowing where what to do, right, our position, right, and so that we can be really effective, all right, 
hands and feet, mouth and heart of Jesus Christ. But remember, love the other brothers and sisters from other ministries as well. Okay, they're also serving the Lord. It's just that God called us here together. We do, we do this together. Okay, so we are not fighting against each other in the whole uh, church of God, Jesus Christ, universal church. Okay, that's why, uh, you know, some people have, don't have this understanding, some believers, they try to please steal sheep. <laughs> okay, so we are not in the business of stealing sheep, we are in the business of saving lost sheep. Yes. Ah, so they're already safe already, just don't worry about that. Sometimes they try to steal you also, okay? So, as long as you know your direction in life, where God has called you, which boat that God called you to travel in. I love boat. Mm -hmm. right? Because boat got no power one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, there's another boat. Ah. Another ministry. Yeah. So we need God's power. So all of us, God direct to head towards serving the Lord. Right? Saving souls. Right? Bless everyone around us. Just know what God, where God has put us, and we do what God did. So don't be uh, Pekuchi. <laughs> ah, the boy see what's happening in the other boat. <laughs> oh, then you, you, you stay too far on the edge of the boat, you drop into the sea. <laughs> Just you want to look one step. Okay, God said, look one direction, keep our eyes on Jesus, okay? And listen, all right? And just go where he needs us, okay? So we are not... Uh, Concert and we can help if they ask us for help, but we don't bother, you know, because we've got a lot of things to do already now. I always tell you all, right, we've got a lot of time, isn't it? <laughs> okay, time is very short. Okay, put all the time to uh, grow your spirit, man, okay, and grow yourself so that we can be uh, effective witnesses unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.